Everyone knows that one guy at open play who can hit his serve annoyingly hard. It's almost like it's not even fair. He literally wins half his points because of his serve. I guarantee you that guy is doing most of the techniques shown in this video. Today, I'm gonna take you through everything that you should be considering if you wanna develop an unbelievably effective serve. Even if you already have a good serve, these tips could help you get even better. Some of the things I'm about to say, I've never heard from anyone else. So one of these tips could literally transform your game. We also had a secret giveaway at some point in this video, so make sure to watch till the end. All right guys, before we get into anything technical, I wanna go over what makes a good serve and the different types of serves. The most important aspect to hitting a good serve is that it goes deep. This is pretty much a unanimously agreed upon thing. Depth will be more important than power and whatever spin or height you choose to use. The deeper you hit your serve, the tougher it will be for your opponents. After depth, the next most important thing will be power. Hitting a harder serve will also make things trickier for your opponents. A common misconception though guys is that more power equals more depth. This is partly true, but just know that depth is the result of power and height. It's usually better to sacrifice some power for height because this makes it less strenuous to hit deep serves. It's infinitely better to hit a slightly slower deep serve than a hard short serve. The last factors are trajectory and spin. Like I said, adding some height to your serve can make it way easier to get it deep. A higher serve will also have a higher bounce, which will be more erratic and difficult for your opponents to time. I personally always like my serves to be a little bit higher. And I'm not saying that you should hit a lob serve, but I'm saying it does help to get a few feet of clearance. When we're thinking about spin on a serve, it's kind of been a hot topic lately. Just know that in my experience, most pro players use a hard top spin serve as their default. To me, this is the most difficult serve to return when it's hit well, and it's also by far the most consistent. The other serve you see is where you curve around the ball like this. This can be effective, but in my experience, the ball is a lot easier to time since it stays so low. Lastly, you've probably heard of the spin serve where players spin the ball by literally snapping it in their hands. Don't get me wrong, if you can get this down, it can be really effective. But for most players, this serve's unrealistic for them and they'll never be able to be consistent with it. That being said, today I'm gonna to show you how to master the one serve that will give you the most results in the least amount of time. You can do this with both the bounce serve and the out of the air serve. In terms of the stroke, I see a lot of beginners using more of a downward motion like they're bowling. Most higher level players serves look more like a forehand though. And this is definitely the best way to get power. So today, I'm gonna to be demonstrating with that technique. All of these tips though will help your serve regardless of what motion you use. All right, getting into the technique. Starting off with the legs, most players prefer to start sideways with their chest and hips facing the side fence. You see some higher level players using an open stance and this can give you a lot of power, but for most players, starting off sideways is gonna be your best bet. This just makes it a lot easier to line up the ball with a good trajectory. Now that we're in the right position to hit the ball, I wanna bring up something called the kinetic chain. The best way to visualize this is to think about a whip. When you crack a whip, all of the motion starts from the handle. As you move your arm forward, the whip transfers that energy to the very end. By the time that energy reaches the end of the whip, it's moving extremely fast. If the whip was stiff, the end wouldn't move nearly as quick. When we're hitting a serve, we wanna think about our whole body like a whip, where our legs are the handle and our paddle is the end. In the beginning, we wanna transfer our weight from our back foot to our front foot. By the time our weight starts moving forward, we also wanna start rotating. In doing this, we want our hips and shoulders to go from facing the side fence to facing the net by the end of our swing. To make things easier, we should also rotate our feet like a golf swing. Some people like to swing their back foot through after the serve too. Focusing on our arm, most of our power is gonna come from driving our shoulder forward. We don't wanna to get too much power from our elbow joint. The key on your arm is that you're loose. Going back to the whip, remember, if we're stiff, we don't get nearly as much power. The main place to focus on being loose is your hand and your wrist. You should be holding the paddle at about a three out of 10 in terms of tension. When you swing your arm forward towards the ball, your wrist should lag behind. Some people like to use the flashlight analogy where you intentionally try to point the bottom of the grip forward like a flashlight. When you make contact with the ball, you shouldn't use too much wrist. The fact that your wrist is loose should naturally propel your paddle through the ball as you make contact. Looking at the toss in our left hand, one of the main things to consider is that we're making contact with the ball out in front to the side of our body about right here. Regardless of whether we use the bounce serve or the out of the air serve, this needs to be the case. To make this easy, just toss the ball from this position. Never toss the ball at an angle. When thinking about whether we should use the bounce serve or the out of the air serve, I think that all players should try the out of the air serve first, and if they really can't do it, 
then they should go to the bounce serve. For whatever reason, most players just starting out have more success with the bounce serve. Looking at tossing technique, one of the biggest problems that I see in the out of the air serve is that players actually toss the ball up. In my opinion, the ball should spend as little time in the air as possible. The more time the ball spends in the air, the more room for error. Because of this, the best way to toss on the out of the air serve is to have a downward facing hand where you simply release the ball when your paddle gets there. This makes it easy to prevent the number one mistake that I see players make on their serves. The mistake is that players miss the center of their paddle and they don't get enough power. If you do this, the serve will most likely drop short or go in the net. So when we're serving, one of the main goals is to make a clean contact in the center of the paddle. The toss is the most important aspect to make this happen, but we want to make sure that we have this down. I actually have an awesome hack that can help you do this more consistently. I call it the practice swing, where you literally do a pretend slow motion serve where you finish by connecting the ball in your hand in the center of the paddle. You can do one with the ball and one without where you do a full swing. If you have the yips or you're just overall inconsistent on your serve, this hack can help you improve immediately. The serve is the only shot that you have full control over, so you should do whatever you can to manage it and take care of it. Think about golf. Most players do a few practice swings before every shot. I'm telling you guys, this really helps, so please try it and see if it makes a difference in your game. If you use the drop serve, just make sure that you drop the ball directly above from where your paddle center will be. This will help a ton too. After we make contact with the ball, we wanna make sure that we extend out towards our target before we come around. If you're trying to hit topspin, which you probably should be on this serve, we also wanna make sure that our paddle is moving up when we hit the ball. To make this happen, we need to start our swing a little below our contact point and finish a little higher. This is called the brush. After you extend outward, you can finish your motion high like this. A lot of players like to catch their paddle with their non-dominant arm. All right, now that we've gone through the technique of the serve, we need to think about how we should practice it, which is arguably the most important part. The serve is awesome because you can practice it all by yourself without having to call up a partner. If you want to practice any other shot on your own, we created the dink pad to be your new drilling partner. The dink pad sticks onto any smooth wall and gives you a way to do wall drills with references for keeping the ball low and out of your opponent's strike zone. If you're someone who needs to work on your dinks, quick hands, resets, or pretty much any pickleball shot, then check out the dink pad at the link in the description below. But back to serves. When you're practicing your serve, you always want to start out slow so you can focus on being loose and using the proper mechanics. So anytime you play, always try to start out with five to 10 slower serves before you start going bigger. Once we're serving hard, we always want to make sure that we have some targets to aim for. I prefer to use more of a reference for depth than individual cones. This way I can tell if I'm consistently getting the serve deep. You want to aim your serve for the back third of the box, which is why I put my reference right at the start of the back third. I also made two zones so that I can practice hitting to my opponent's forehand and their backhand. When we're practicing, we need to do a little bit of experimentation to see what works best for us. Try to play around with power, height, and spin, and see what gives you the most consistent possible results. There's a common saying that you want to make 9 out of 10 serves, so try to find a consistent way to make this happen. If you're making less than this, try to focus on building up your consistency before you add too much power. If you make pretty much every serve, then try to add some power using the techniques I just taught you. Your consistency may drop slightly, but the advantage of using a trickier serve will make up for it. When we think about crazy spins and the different types of serves, you don't necessarily need to use these to be an awesome player. Also guys, we're giving away over $300 worth of prizes to one of our subscribers. This includes one of our portable nets, three packs of lead tape, and a private online 30 minute lesson with me where we can pick apart your game and take you to the next level. To enter, all you have to do is dink that like button, subscribe to our channel, and comment what type of video you think we should make next. On November 1st, we'll announce on our Instagram who the winner is, so make sure to follow us there too. And if you want to learn return strategy, watch this.